Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And what I have for you here is a fraction problem that involves variables. And in algebra, fractions with variables uh, we refer to as rational expressions. So what we're doing here is adding rational expressions, just in case you're looking at this problem and asking, where in my algebra book uh, or math course can I kind of refer to? Like what chapter or unit are we discussing? So this again is rational expressions, rational equations would be the kind of uh, big picture topic. But I want to talk about two must know ways to do this problem. So this is a pretty basic problem. Hopefully you know how to do this. Now, if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to walk through these two uh, ways that all algebra students need to uh, know. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so again, the problem here is two over seven X plus X over two. We're trying to add these rational expressions or fractions that have variables. What is the answer? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Okay, so here is the solution. So two over seven X plus X over two, the sum of these two fractions or rational expressions is the following. 4 plus 7x squared over 14x. So this is the correct answer. Well, hopefully got this right. And if that is the case, let's go ahead and give you a nice, lovely little happy face an A plus a 100%. And multiple stars so you can tell your friends and family that indeed you understand fractions because you have to understand numeric uh, fractions, i.e. arithmetic, to be able to do this problem. So you have a working knowledge of uh, the LCD, and you probably maybe even know this other technique that I'm going to be talking about. So again, there's two approaches. There's probably even more than two approaches, but there's two main ways you can look at this problem, and you should know both approaches. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. Okay, so what are the two ways? Well, first of all, we want to recognize that we are adding fractions. So anytime in algebra you have uh, variable fractions, i.e. rational expressions, you want to think to yourself, well, what would I do if this was just like a numeric fraction? So here over 2 over 7x, let's just write, uh, let's just kind of uh, get rid of the x here, just have 2 over 7 plus x over 2. Let's just uh, put a 1 for that x. So let's just look at this problem, okay? So this is kind of close to what we have right here. So 2 sevenths plus 1 half. How would you approach this problem here? Well, hopefully uh, you're going to say, well, you know what? We don't have common denominators. Uh, in other words, if we had common denominators, in other words, if this was uh, 7 and the denominators were common, i.e. the same, then what we uh, can do here is simply just add the numerator. So 2 sevenths plus 1 sevenths would just be 3 over 7. Okay, so that's the objective here is to get um, your fractions that you want to add or subtract to have the same denominator, i.e. common denominators. Now, if you don't have the same denominator, we can't uh, do the problem yet, right? So we're kind of stuck at this stage. We have 2 sevenths plus 1 half. So you're looking at the denominators like, well, we got to fix this up, uh, uh, fix these denominators such that they are common, i.e. the same. And in this case, the same denominator uh, that both 7 and 2 um, have in common would be 14. And then we call that the lowest common denominator. And to um, you know, kind of like to find the LCD is uh, like right here, most people could say, oh yeah, the LCD is 14. But if I gave you like say 70 and 25, that would be a little bit more challenging problem. If I gave you 706 and 258, and I said find the LCD, that's a whole nother kind of procedure that you need to understand, right? So just because you could be, oh yeah, I, I know that LCD is 14. Well, this is a real easy problem. So you need to really uh, understand uh, the LCD and how to find it. And that's for another a separate video. So if you're struggling with LCD, let me give you a couple of suggestions right now. I have a ton of fraction videos on my YouTube channel 
that can, um, you know, that you can review that will go over how to find LCD. If you're looking for a great review of basic math to include LCD, fractions, percent, everything else, I'm going to suggest checking out one or two of my courses, my math foundation course, which is a great little mini course to kind of review basic uh, math and arithmetic. Uh, of course, you can find that at my math help program and or my pre-algebra course. Okay, so again, if you need a review and basic math and fractions, you want to go there. Okay, so here, when we're dealing with fractions um, that have variables, you still need to be thinking in terms of what you learned with uh, in arithmetic, i.e., what is the LCD here? So we have 7x and 2. We can't add these fractions because these denominators are not the same, so we have to find the lowest common denominator. So the LCD is basically, uh, we have to look at the prime factors of each of the denominators. So the prime factors of 7x is 7 times x, and then the prime factors of 2 is 2 times 1. Of course, we don't have to uh, put in 1 as a factor, because 1 is a factor of all numbers. So to find the LCD, what you need to do is take all the prime factors of each of the denominators involved and find the, uh, the product of uh, all those prime factors. Now, that's kind of a quick way of saying it. There's more uh, kind of detail involved. But if you understand what I just said there, you should be able to understand that the LCD here is going to be 7 times x times 2 or 14x. Okay, again, if our uh, arithmetic problem was 2 over 7 plus 1 over 2, the LCD would be 14. But we have an x down here in our problem. So our LCD is 14x. Okay, so what do we need to do with that 14x? Well, we need to rewrite these two fractions, these two rational uh, expressions, such that the denominator is 14x. So here we have 2 over 7x plus x over 2. So how can I change this 7x into a 14x? Well, to change a 7x into a 14x, all we need to do is multiply that denominator by 2. So 2 times 7x will get us to that 14x or that LCD. But if we're going to do that, we also have to multiply the numerator by 2. Okay, That's the main idea when you're rewriting a fraction such that you have the LCD. So 2 times 2 gives us a new numerator of 4 over um, of 4. And of course, this fraction or rational expression is equivalent to this 4 over 14x. But again, instead of a 7x as a denominator, now we have a 14x which we want. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on this other rational expression or fraction. We have x over 2. So how do I change a 2 into a 14x? Easy, we're just going to multiply it by a 7x. So 7x times 2 gives us that 14x. But again, we're going to have to multiply that 7x times this x up in the numerator. So that's going to be 7x squared. Okay, so at this point, we basically rewrote both of these fractions, these uh, rational expressions, and now they have common denominators, uh, which is, of course, 14x. And we're kind of ready now to finish up this problem. Okay, so here we're trying to add two fractions. We have uh, the same denominator, 14x. All we need to do is simply add the numerator, so that will be 4 plus 7x. So that is the numerator, and that's going to be over the LCD, which is 14x. So this is one way to do this problem. And all algebra students need to understand how to find the LCD to add uh, rational expressions and, of course, fractions as well. Okay, So this is the first way. And this is probably the most common approach to solving this problem. And again, anything you might be struggling here with, if it's the LCD, if you're like, yeah, I think I need a bit of a review on that, I'm telling you right now, when it comes to algebra, you got to be super strong with fractions and arithmetic. So don't, you know, never feel like anything is beneath you. Like, oh, that's basic math. I should know that. I, you know, I don't need to go back and do that. If you're not, you know, like 100% strong in this stuff, just take a, a moment. Okay, you don't have to spend a lot of time, like a week, reviewing fractions. You know, a couple hours. You know, maybe even like 30 uh, minutes to an hour of good review might just be enough to kind of get you where you need to be. But don't kind of progress in, uh, you know, learning algebra with any kind of weak areas, like any known weak areas. You're like, eh, I'm not so good in fractions, but I'm just going to continue to try to learn. You need to correct 
any weak areas in mathematics that you discover. Okay, so let's talk about this second way to add uh, these rational expressions. And this might be my all-time favorite thing in mathematics. I call it the bow tie hack or bow tie method to add and subtract fractions. This is a must-know technique. And it's not always kind of taught directly as well. Okay, so if you're like, well, what are you talking about here? The bow tie technique, what does that even mean? Well, let me draw a little stick figure right here. So here's my little stick figure, man. What is a bow tie? Well, bow tie is those ties that look like that, right? So some of you might be saying, I bet you wear, Mr. YouTube Math Man, a bow tie, and you might have a pocket protector and some pencils, mechanical pencils and calculators. No, that's not me. But if you do like bow ties, that's cool because I think bow ties are interesting. But the thing about it is this, the bow tie, which kind of looks like this, this is the kind of uh, basic pattern that I want you to keep in mind when we um, are adding or subtracting fractions. This is an all, uh, kind of a backup method, but a great method that every single algebra student needs to know. Okay, you absolutely need to know this. It's gonna make your life so much easier. So let's go ahead and see how it works. So we're gonna add these two rational expressions. 2 over 7x plus x over 2. By the way, this works with arithmetic as well. So if you didn't have any variables here, we can do this. So the bow tie method is a very specific technique. Okay, or uh, Well, it's a very specific technique, but it's a very specific pattern. All right, so here is how it goes. So you're going to start with the number, okay, the denominator to the right. This denominator right here to the bottom right, and you're going to multiply to the numerator to the top left. Okay, so it's going to be 2 times 2. has to be in this very specific order. So although I'm multiplying here, you, you can't uh, go 7x times x and put that first. So in other words, you got to follow this uh, specific pattern. So you're going to start here, multiply across. So 2 times 2, of course, is 4. And what we're going to be doing here is first building our numerator. Okay, so 2 times 2, you're going to write a 4 there. This is an addition problem, so you're going to write a plus right there. Now, our second um, step is to take this 7x. We're going to start in this bottom left denominator and multiply across this way. So we kind of have like a little crisscross pattern here. So 7x times x, of course, is 7x squared. And this forms our numerator. 4 plus 7x squared is our numerator. And to get our denominator, we're simply going to multiply across right here. So 7x times 2 is 14x, and this is exactly what we got by using the LCD method, all right? So 4 plus 7x squared over 14x, that's the answer. Remember that. Let's go back up here. Here is the answer with the LCD, 4 plus 7x squared over 14x. And just to kind of prove it to you that it is the same answer, there you go. Okay, but think about how fast this is to do. This is 2 times 2, that's 4 plus 7x times x, 7x squared, all over 7x times 2, or 14x. All right, so these are two techniques that every single math student, every single uh, student studying algebra uh, should know. Okay, and again, working with fractions and rational expressions is a critical part of, you know, more advanced mathematics. So don't, again, let any weak areas slide, all right? That's the kind of the number one thing that gets students in trouble. They're like, well, maybe I won't see this anymore, you know, and I could just move on to the next chapter with a fresh start. No, if you failed anything, if you know you're weak at anything, just make yourself a little math shopping list. Like, all right, I need to get pick up some math skills and fractions and LCD, and I got to work on this and work on that. And just work on this list, okay? Uh, no one's perfect. You know, when you're learning something new, you're not going to just learn everything perfect the first time. The key is to just recognize, again, what you need to work on and review and progress and build your skill set, okay? And the only way you're going to do that is through improvement and practice. All right, so hopefully this little video helps you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.